Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and to this series on this Ben Wade pipe that we are restoring for my friend Jose. Uh, when last we left it, we had just gotten the bone tenon out and exposed the threads which we're going to ream away because we're going to make a nice Delrin uh, slip fit tenon for this. But uh, you, you noticed I uncovered a crack while I was working on this and before I ream this I want to fix that crack so that it's just not going to be an issue. Uh, with the the walls moving on this as we as we ream it so to do that i'm going to just i'm going to take a, um, a little piece of uh dowel here that i've sort of put a cone shaped end to and i use this quite a lot when i'm fixing cracks you could just push it in and just gently open that crack up and i'm hoping that you're going to be able to see that um let me get my little flashlight here Yeah, so it's it's relatively small, but it's there. Um, just just a tiny little hairline crack. So the nice thing about that is when I pull this out, it'll clamp up by itself. I don't need to put anything on it to clamp it. And what I'm going to use is just some some regular super glue, uh, cyan cyanoacrylate. Uh, we'll put a little bit of that out on a card. Don't need much at all. And then we're going to take a toothpick and just scoop some up and sort of dribble it down into that crack. Now this actually is not a terribly critical fix because this is going to have the silver band over it as well. And we're going to try to size the tenon appropriately so there's no, no need to worry about that. But nevertheless, we want to Try to get the glue down in there as best we can. Let me open that just a bit more. Yeah, that should be good. So we'll take this out now and just let it seal back up. And just do a quick wipe on the outside to get rid of any residual glue. Although, again, that's going to be covered by the uh, the silver band so we'll, we, we don't need to worry too much about that and we're gonna have to put some glue on this to to hold that band in place since it's just a a very easy slip fit okay so that should take care of that for us and let's move this out of the way so I don't glue myself so the next uh, the next thing then is going to be to ream the threads away and for that, I actually got a new reamer because I didn't have one that was the right size. So this is a 932nd uh, chucking reamer. All right, so if you haven't used reamers before, these are basically you know, very sharp blades here. You can see the, the spacing between them. They are designed to turn in one direction. You can see the blades are a bit angled. So they're intended to turn um, you know, just like a drill bit would. And this is a, I, I like the straight flute ones, which this is a straight flute. You can also get spiral flutes where the, you know, the flutes spiral about like a drill bit, but they're, I, I haven't found a need for them. Uh, I'm going to put this in a standard drill chuck just to have something to hold on to. I'll tighten that down with the key. And Make sure that's that glue dries pretty quickly. I think we're going to be okay. You know, just just to be absolutely certain that we're going to keep things in compression here, I'm going to put a little bit of tape around this. Let me get some of this thick hockey tape here, and we'll cut a piece in half. And I'll show you what I'm doing. Just a second. So we're going to take this piece of tape which is a little bit too too wide and we're just going to cut it right down there and I'm catching it on the edge of my bench to cut it which is why I'm doing it out of, out of shot alright that should be fine 
got to be careful with this tape. It's very sticky. And I'm just going to catch it on, on the end here and pull it tight. And this tape has a little bit of stretch to it, so it'll, it'll clamp that down nicely. And we should be good. That's just sort of... Um, what do the what do they say? Belts and suspenders, something like that. Um, let's just see if we can cut away the excess here. Yeah, maybe not. This this tape is tough stuff. It's not important. I just wanted to better be able to see what I what I'm doing here, or have you see what I'm doing? Yeah, that's close enough. You get the idea. And again, I'm not worried about the finish here because the, the silver is going to cover this. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to carefully bring this in and begin to rotate it. And every so often we're going to rotate the pipe in our hand. And I'm paying attention to trying to keep this in line with the shank because we don't want the the tenon to go all wacky on us. All right, let's see where we're at now. That did not take off very much at all. Yeah, we're, we're, we're making a difference, but we're certainly not uh, not getting those threads out of there, so we're going to have to go to a larger size reamer after all. Uh, but let's, let's go ahead until this bottoms out. That seems to be bottomed. Okay, so huh, maybe I didn't need to order the new reamer. Let me, uh, let me check on this, figure out which the next size I need is, and I'll bring you back once I've got the right reamer in hand. Okay, so I did a little bit more measuring and, and checking and, and so on, and I had dramatically underestimated how much I'm going to need to ream out here, um, which is fine. So I've decided what I'm going to use is this 9mm reamer, and that looks large, but realistically if, if you look it's sort of just fitting inside there that's going to ream away those threads completely and that's what we need we, in order to have a good uh, friction fit for the new tenon we're going to have to get rid of those threads completely now that is obviously going to make a more um, narrow wall thickness here on the shank and that worries me somewhat but again we're going to have that silver band reinforcing it i don't think it's going to be too much of a problem and of course we're, we're going to make a delrin tenon which is you know got a nice uh, smooth uh, slick fit so uh, I, I don't think this is going to be an issue thinning it out that much and honestly there's no other option because we have to get rid of those threads or the tenon will not fit properly so for nine millimeter uh, the correct drill that we would use prior to reaming is this guy here this is a p drill it's a letter drill and we need to work our way up to that. So I've got here a uh, 5 16 and 11 32nd. And we're just going to go through that same process where I'm going to put them into the, to the chuck. And just very carefully work them in until they bottom out. Set. I've got this reamed out now to nine millimeter. This is the nine millimeter reamer and you can see it fits in there quite nicely. Um, it's not perfect. There are still some ridges that can be seen in there, but I think it's good enough. And the truth is I just dare not take any more material off of the, the, uh, the shank walls. So 
we're going to live with this. Uh, that mortise is about as wide as it can be on this pipe, I think. So we're going to, we're going to leave this for the moment and we're going to move on now to designing the stem. And let me just get my reamer put away here. Uh, you can see there's quite a bit of uh, material that came out of the the mortise there. So we, we really did take off quite a, quite a bit. Uh, but it's okay. I, I think it still has plenty of meat on it to uh, to hold the tenon, especially if it's if it's going to be a Delrin tenon. Let me just uh, get rid of this mess. Okay, so designing the stem. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is design the tenon. So we're going to make a Delrin tenon, and it's uh, it's going to be made out of white Delrin because the material that we're using this uh, this orange amber is probably going to be somewhat translucent once we get it very thin and I don't want a black um, insert showing through the, the amber. So we're going to be designing that based off of a couple of things and let me just get some... This is the, the broken end of the amber stem. We're going to just use this because I want to measure the, the diameter here. Uh, one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that we're kind of limited by this silver band. So we, we obviously have to make our stem exactly that diameter in order for, it, for the band to fit. All right, and actually let's get out the old, the old stem as well so we get something to, to look at as we're designing here. So for the tenon, and, and this is just the way I do it, um, this may or may not make sense to you, but you know we're, we got the part that's going to go into the the mortise, and then we're going to have some part here. And it may be bigger, it may be smaller. I I don't know, but I'm just going to draw it like this for now, and that's what's going to go into the stem. And I I indicate there that it's going to be serrated because we want the epoxy to be able to stick. Let's see if I can bring you in a bit further. All right, now we know that this is about one inch and that may, we may make that shorter. We may, we can adjust that, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll suit it, we'll make it to fit. Uh, we also know that this is um, nine millimeters because we reamed it to nine millimeters and that's gonna be 0 0.345 inches and I'm gonna, say that's approximately that we'll, we'll oversize it a bit and then we'll size it to fit the the mortise uh, perfectly so the dimensions on this part are going to depend on what we have here so if i measure this so that's a, that's like 0.5 Two five. Oops. Oh, I was afraid of that. This is not a circle. <laughs> oh, this is going to make things interesting. So that is actually not perfectly circular. It's, it's actually a bit of an oval. Um, hmm. So we may have to actually play some games with that. Uh, I can't really measure the shank right now because of the tape but I thought so that's about 5-2 that actually is fairly circular so it's funny that this is showing up as being more oval shaped it might be that that stem when it cracked uh, actually compressed a bit all right well let's assume that this measurement is correct and we need our stem to be let's say 0.525 just just as a as an approximate measure so stem is approximately 0.525 diameter all right that means that we have to figure out the diameter of this part of the insert now obviously it cannot be bigger than 0.525 um, 
0.345 seems pretty reasonable. Uh, that would leave us with plenty of meat around this. Uh, let me just get out my calculator and do the do the math on that. So that would be 90 thousandths. Um, so we're looking at, I like to visualize these things, we're looking at that much stem material or acrylic surrounding the the tenon. I think that's reasonable. Uh, we could we could go smaller. But no I, I I think that's what we'll do. So we will just make this this will just be a straight uh, 0.345. So I know this doesn't make sense because there's a step here but it makes sense to me to I, I, this is how I always draw these out, so I know what this means. And then in terms of the depth here, well, you know, we want it, we want it long enough so that it, it gets purchased. And typically, um, I want to make the insert to the stem at least as long as the diameter of the stem. And since the stem diameter is 0.525, we, we can round that off and we can say that this is going to be a half inch. So we'll do 0 0.5 inches. All right. All right. So that's going to be the, um, the tenon. And that's the first part that we need to machine. Now, the stem blank is, you know, we're, we're not doing any stem design right now. We're just, we're just trying to figure out how big the blank needs to be. And, of course, we want to make sure that we match the original in length because it has to fit back in the leather case. So let's measure that. At least as close as we reasonably can measure that. And that's pretty much three inches, so that's easy enough. So the blank has to be three inches. And we're going to need to make a mortise in the in the stem blank. And we know that that mortise is going to be 0.5 inches deep and 0.345 inches wide. Um, now here's here's where we get into a little bit of trouble. So I don't want to get into like, I'm sorry, I'm probably out of shot here. I don't want to get into boring out that, that mortise. Uh, I'd like to be able to just drill it. <clears throat> so uh, let's see. Point three, four. Hmm. So it's actually very close. So three eighths is point three seven five. Um, three eighths seems like a nice number. Uh, we know that we can go up to uh, more than that because you know we got plenty of, of meat here on the on the stem. So what if we went to three-eighths? I think that would be okay. So why don't we change our insert diameter to three-eighths. And we'll change this to three-eighths. Well, folks, this ran a bit longer than I had hoped. So what we're going to do is we're going to end this video here. And the next installment is going to be primarily lathe work as we generate the stem blank. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your support, your likes, your comments, and your subscriptions. Take care, and we'll talk soon.